Hello everyone watching, this is Walking and Talking with Phoenix and today we're going to be discussing the source of guilt, uh, especially in regards to suspicious partners and always worrying about their significant other cheating on them. So there's a pattern I've noticed throughout all the relationships I've had in dating women that the, the ones that were particularly paranoid all the time um, you know, about me going and finding another girl and cheating and doing something behind their back, you know, were the ones more likely to actually cheat themselves. And I think this is no coincidence. I think that the reason why a lot of people are so paranoid and suspicious of other people's motives and other people doing certain things of any kind, it's because they themselves uh, feel those same motives. They themselves find themselves being tempted and, uh, you know, falling into situations where they are asking, oh, should I do this? I could do this. And because of that, because they, they can relate to it firsthand, doing these things behind people's back, they worry that their partner, thus, can also do the same. And if the opportunity arises for their partner, they're worried that they too might consider taking it, just like they do. So I think that's part of it. I mean, you do get people that have been cheated on so much and they've experienced a passion of things happening to the point where it starts sticking, you know? And they just, they get paranoid because of that. They think, well, everyone's done it to me before. It's probably going to happen again. And whenever there's any kind of remote telltale sign, they'll, they'll build that anthill up into a mountain and they'll be all fatalistic and be like, oh, well, it's all happening all over again. The same shit repeating. So there are different reasons, but I think the source of guilt most of the time um, is, you know, and the reason why people procrastinate, uh, not procrastinate, judge other people is because really there's some internal stuff that goes on inside that they haven't really been honest about, uh, that they haven't really maybe accepted about themselves, or they haven't really faced in the first place and brought, brought to clear resolution, you know? So there's always just some balance. There's this one hand, you know, there's, they keep saying, well, this is who I am in their head, and this is what I want, and this is how I go about things. And then they find themselves being compelled and, uh, you know, being curious about doing things very differently and for different sets of reasons. And I think the more honest you are with yourself and the more authentic you are and straight up, you know, and you got to be, you got to do all this with yourself first before you can be straight up with other people and be honest. you got to be honest with yourself. I think the more you do that, the less guilty you'll find yourself feeling because of the way you act and the promises and the negotiations and deals that you extend and make with other people isn't going to be going against who you are, but it's going to be in alignment with your true self, your authentic self. And that's the issue, I think, is that people, are, maybe they're raised into this and been conditioned in whatever way, but they end up developing this set of ideals, this ideal self which a lot of the time is at odds with who they really are. So this causes friction, this causes, you know, guilt in the long run because who they actually are fails to live up to in truth and in principle with this projection, with this idea of themselves that they're trying to maintain, that they're trying to develop. So I think authenticity is a part of it. There'll be a lot less guilt if you don't set up all these rules which are unnatural to you and go against your true nature. Um, and if you don't, you know, if you don't set up those rules, you can't break them and you can't feel guilty. You can't punish yourself every time for being what you are and who you are and feeling how you feel. And I think from there, once you're honest with yourself, stop punishing yourself unnecessarily and start accepting yourself and loving yourself, then it's easier to start accepting other people and loving them without being suspicious all the time that they might be as fucked up as you or at least your perception of fucked up, which really it's just an incongruency between who you really are and this ideal image. And that's all it is. You aren't really fucked up if you don't live up to that image. It just means you're being unrealistic in your projections and your expectations of yourself. And maybe you need to lower those expectations or just change them. You know what I mean? And basically the more in harmony you are with yourself at the end of the day, the more in harmony with others and trust will go full circle. That's my thoughts on that. Cheers for watching. There's more. Feel free to like, share, subscribe if it's interesting to you or relevant and if you think your friends might benefit.
cool. Thanks, guys, and yeah, remember, face everything inside. And once you've done that, you'll much be, much be able, easily be able to face everything on the outside and deal with things there. Thank you. Take it easy.